Loving Jesus means hating sin. And if that is not the case, then there has been no repentance. There is no transformation. Then there is no new man. That means there is no newness of life. And one must wonder if there is actually salvation at all. An important feast during the season of Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Hak HaMatzot. We read about it in Leviticus 23 verse 6. It says there, and on the 15th day of the same month, that's the first month, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Every year we go through this uh, cycle of seven feasts, holy days or holy convocations. And with it, God reminds us of his plan of salvation for the world. Now, these feasts are not just dull repetitions of the same thing. They are rehearsals and even appointed times, Moadim. Every year our understanding should deepen and our growth increase. Now, the first of these feasts is Passover. Um, and it's probably the most meaningful. It certainly is the most solemn as we remember or commemorate the sacrificial death of our Savior, Jesus. Among other things, we do so by having the Holy Supper. And we do this in remembrance of His Last Supper and of the sacrifice of His body and the shedding of His blood for the remission of our sins. Passover is all about sins and about the passing over of the wages of sin, which is death, thanks to Jesus' sacrifice. It's not just a matter of stating, oh, he died for my sins, I am now cleansed from my sins, they are washed away, all is fine. No, God wants us to examine ourselves, to deeply reflect on our sins. Paul writes about this in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 27 through 29. Wherefore, whosoever eat, shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. It's not a light thing. Um, he says, um, by the way, uh, uh, he says, examine yourself to see, or he rather, he does not say, examine yourself to see whether you're worthy to eat and drink, but rather, if you eat and drink without self-examination, you eat and drink unworthily. I hope you see the nuance in this. Now, the Passover is kept on the 14th of the first month in the evening. And as we read from Leviticus 23 verse 6, the next morning on the 15th begins the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And that lasts seven days. Now sure it's a reminder of the exodus of the children of Israel um, when they took unleavened bread with them, which was by the way very practical because unleavened bread uh, doesn't go bad for a long time, as opposed to leavened bread, which you can only keep for a very short time. Um, but it's much more than that. Leaven symbolizes sin. Let's read two verses on that. The first one from Matthew 16, verse 6. Uh, then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 6 and 7, Paul says, Your glorying is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, and are uh, as, you, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So we see that we play an active role. Um, there are verbs here, meaning these are things we ought to do. Jesus says, uh, beware. 
and take heed and beware. That's what you have to do. And Paul uh, writes, purge out the old leaven. Also, again, something you actively have to be engaged in. And of course, it can only be done um, because of the sacrifice of Jesus, but still we are to examine ourselves. And that is what the Feast of Unleavened Bread is all about. Deuteronomy 16 tells us that no leavened bread shall be e eaten or even seen in all the land. In Exodus 12, uh, it speaks also about this. Um, speaking about no leaven to be found in your house. In Exodus 12 verse 15 it says, Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And you see here how serious this is. Um, to be cut off from Israel means you no longer you, you no longer belong to the people of God. Um, it continues then in verse 19: Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whomsoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations. Shall you eat unleavened bread? And so many who observe this feast do, um, do their best to clean their homes from, um, from leaven, to make sure that it is free of leaven. And it's not so easy, because many products contain leaven. And there may be crumbs here or there that you didn't know of. Now, physical leaven just symbolizes sin. The searching and removing has a deeper meaning. And the meaning is finding sin in the places of your lives, uh, of your life, and of your heart, where you at least, uh, where you least expect them. Working to clean uh, our homes of leaven pictures the greater effort of searching out and removing hidden and hard to find sin from our lives. It's useless to clean your house of leaven and not deal with your sins. It's part of examining ourselves before taking the bread and wine. And it helps us to identify and being aware of the sins for which our Passover lamb died in our stead. It's us saying that we really want to get rid of our sins in our lives. But it also makes us realize that we cannot keep our houses leaven free every year we will find again so much leaven that we have to remove. Which means that in this life we cannot be blameless. And therefore we need Jesus continually to convict us, to encourage us, and to give us the spiritual weapons that we need to fight the emergence and multipli multiplication of leaven. As with every feast, we must take the meaning of it with us throughout the entire year, not only during these seven days of observance. Keeping the leaven outside of your homes is really about keeping the sin out of your hearts. Accepting Jesus' gift of salvation does not mean that we have a license to sin, as some actually think. Loving Jesus means hating sin. And if that is not the case, then there has been no repentance. There is no transformation. Then there is no new man. That means there is no newness of life. And one must wonder if there is actually salvation at all. So we are to keep our hearts. Before anything we do in life, we are to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Solomon puts it this way in Proverbs 4, verse 23 through 27. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, 
and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right and nor, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. <coughs> he makes it very practical for us. Peter, on the other hand, um, he, he puts it basically in one word. In 1 Peter 5 verse 8, he says, be vigilant. Um, but here, the way Solomon describes it, we get uh, practical tips on how to do that. Uh, he mentions to think about and to control that which comes out of our mouth. And secondly, he tells us to be careful about what we allow to, our eyes to see. Um, I've mentioned this before, but you cannot unsee nor unsay anything. So you have to be aware, you have to be aware before you speak or before you decide to watch something. Keep your feet on the right path, he says. Be careful where you go. As, as children of God, as um, followers of Jesus, we do not just go any place, because many places are, um, are corrupted, are polluted, are dirty, and um, the, there's no place for us there. And this, these are both physical places as well as maybe you can say virtual places. You can think of um, uh, online um, uh, places. So be careful where you go. Keep your feet on the right path. Let all your ways be established. Keyword here is all. Let all your ways be established. Not some, not only sometimes. All. Whether it's in work or privately, whatever it may be. Um, we have to realize that we are um, in, in enemy territory. That's where we are. And so we have to be very careful. Um, um, Haggai... Uh, mentions this also in chapter 1 and verse 5. He says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. And then two verses later, in verse 7, he repeats it. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. All these things, practical things, help us to keep our hearts. And why is this so important? Because our hearts and our minds, by the way, in Hebrew, that's one and the same word, because they are intrinsically connected. They are actually one and um, form our, our being, in a, in a way. Our hearts and minds in Hebrew, lev, they guide and direct everything that we do. So if we do not guard and protect them from worldly and ungodly matters and of entertainment, then they can cause our downfall. <coughs> Keeping the leaven of sin out of our hearts is very important. Even a little leaven can leaven the whole lump. Solomon warns against this also in another proverb. In uh, Proverbs 11 verse 27 he says, He that diligently seeketh good procures favor, but he that seeketh mischief it shall come unto him. In other words, keeping your heart or failing to do so, works both ways. It either results in favor or in evil. Or as Paul puts it in Galatians 6 verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We reap what we sow. When we remain unleavened, we reap the rewards of godly living. Peace, contentment, um, joy, and finally, eternal life. But if we allow the leaven of sin to corrupt our hearts, then we will lead, lead a life of sin. And we will reap misfortune, and misery, destruction, and ultimately, death. It's a serious warning. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread reminds us that we cannot be lazy but we need to be actively involved in seeking through our hearts, in examining ourselves, in identifying and removing the leaven. Removing the leaven, a very important step of it, of course, or maybe 
what it actually is, is to repent from them, eh? to turn away from them. Repentance is actually uh, a key word. The seriousness of this is echoed in the words in the epistle uh, to the Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews 2 verses 1 through 3. Uh, it says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed. So give heed, it's the same that Jesus said we read from Matthew 16. Uh, Take heed and beware. We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. So we can neglect our salvation and eventually let it slip. We have these feasts not only to teach us once, but we repeat them each year. Because understanding God's way and getting to know him better is a process. A holy and righteous character does not come instantly. It develops through experiences. It takes growth, maturing. Every year when we repeat the feasts, we learn more and we grow deeper. But if we fail to appreciate our salvation and neglect the lessons learned, we will drift away and we run the risk of not escaping, as Paul writes. Unleavened bread is a good reminder whether we even care about some of the leaven of sin in our hearts. Are we willing to find it and remove it? Maybe we need to repent and do the first works again in order to recapture our first love, as Jesus uh, prompts in Revelation 2. It takes time and effort to remove all the leaven from your house. So, likewise, it takes time and effort to cleanse your life your heart, but God desires us to do so until the end, and not to become sluggish. And he is in turn faithful to reward us for it. In Hebrews 6 verse 9 through 12 it says, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shewed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints, and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Paul emphasizes that we have to remain diligent, that means careful, until the very end. The point is not to be unleavened for eight days uh, every year in remembrance of the Exodus, but to remain unleavened all year through in thankfulness and in remembrance of Jesus' finished work. Amen. Amen.